we brought the fountain out of storage this week. It's looking quite pretty, isn't it? How bonny is that? I miss it in winter, don't you? That sound of running water. It's lovely. So I'm happy to see that back and it was quite easy to set it back up again. Very pretty. Of course the aces around here at the moment just getting a little bit of weak sunshine. They'll be um, living around the front where it's shaded for the rest of the year but just while they've got their spring colour um, they're staying here so I get to see them more and enjoy them and I'm sure they enjoy a little bit of sunshine um, early in the season when it's weak it must give them some kind of energy but anyway they're, they're easy to move around in pots so last night um, Going Green and Orange Dream lived in the greenhouse just because we had a, a minus one or minus two I think last night We've had a few of those um, over the last few weeks. We've had a few minus ones and two, so I've been able to squirrel them away in the garage or in the greenhouse just for the evening and then bring them out. So um, it's quite good that they've been around here because it's a quite a fair way to walk around from the front to the back. So um, they're, they're not overly heavy, but they're heavy enough when you're shifting them around. And there's um, Phoenix coming out as well. This was in the garage last night. And this is a uh, Yuki Gumo. Oh, leafing out really well, aren't they? And I think Trompenberg may have taken a hit because Trompenberg's in the ground, so I wasn't going to be shifting that anywhere. But um, Trompenberg has um, got some frosting on his leaves. So there's a, there is a bit of frost damage here and there. Not on everything. Some of them um, are okay, but some of them have got that sort of golden look at the edges. So um, he's going to have a strange look about him this year because we had this once before um, at a previous property. Um, we had Trompenberg in the ground there and um, the frost got it and it did the same thing. It sort of... Um, it sort of went this kind of golden brown so it was a bit of a weird looking tree for the rest of the year um, sadly Trompenberg has sustained some frost damage this is new this is um, a Duxia which is uh, leafing out nice that was a bare root probably about a month ago but it's um, it's taking very well it's, it's doing great so pleased with that this azalea is looking pretty smashing, isn't it? Look at this. <laughs> really beautiful. These are the begonias that um, I had in various pots and baskets last year. The cascading pinks and whites. They're beautiful. So I kept them over winter in boxes on a shelf in the garage. And um, I brought them out probably about the end of January, I think. And they've been living in the sunroom with lots of pelagoniums and dahlias. These are dahlias that, uh, again, were kept in the garage over winter in cardboard boxes wrapped up and um, brought out towards the end of January, I think, and potted on. And they've been living in the sunroom. <laughs> Oh dear, we should just call it, let's tell, call it as it is. It's not a sunroom, it's a greenhouse extension. <laughs> well, it, it is from October to May. It's, um, it's, it's a greenhouse extension. Um, but anyway, I'm really grateful for it. And um, these babies have, um, have come on beautiful, haven't they? So I've got lots of these to plant, dahlias, and I've been pinching them out actually. Uh, I don't think I've done that one yet, but I've been sort of um, pinching these uh, as they grow in. But they've not done bad, have they, from uh, from January to now. So they can get put into pots. And I didn't have one single loss this year in the garage, not one. So that is a that is a big win. And I'm, I'm sure that's got a lot to do with Gardener Ben. 
because he he did a video or oh, it's probably last year sometime or it might have been the year before actually I think it might have been the year before because I did it I did this last year based on um, his suggestion which was to just dry them out in the greenhouse for a few weeks before um, boxing them up and that's exactly what I did I just dried everything out in the greenhouse and just left it for quite a few weeks to so the soil was really really dry and um, and then I sort of cleaned them up a bit I didn't wet them or anything I just brushed and rubbed off as much of the soil as I could but I, you know I wasn't too um, you know I, I didn't brush it all off there was a little bit of soil on but it was very very dry that was the main thing I think of what he was trying to say was that you know dry it um, before you store it so that you know that there's no dampness there and um, I wrapped them in brown paper and then into some quite thick sided cardboard boxes with lots of holes punched in down the sides and on the top and the bottom and everywhere and I stored them on a shelf in the garage that's um, an adjoining wall to the house so quite a warm wall although it's not a heated garage but um, it's, it wasn't freezing in there and I did the same with the begonias although um, I did clean those up a bit more and and pretty much got those um, all, everything rubbed off of those before and I did the same with them I wrapped them in um, brown paper and popped them in cardboard boxes and I haven't had one single loss this year and um, come January towards the end of January I think it was um, I just sort of went in because I've been going and checking them once a month to see if there were any mould or you know anything untoward to deal with and there was nothing everything was dry as a bone just fast asleep happy um, but in towards the end of January I thought oh I can't wait any longer I was getting a bit you know I want to get going I was sick of winter and we'd had so much rain and it was so miserable I just wanted something to do so I set to and um, I started to dig them out and I was just delighted that everybody was in really good shape. Nothing nothing had um, come a cropper, you know, I hadn't lost anything, not one. So that was amazing, really. I mean, that's, the, that's um, a pelagonium. I don't know how it's ended up on this chair because all the pelagoniums are on a bench around there. I'll show you in a minute, but I kept these as well. But these stayed... These stayed in the sunroom over winter. I didn't put those. I think there was a large one in a big pot. That did stay in the garage on, um, on the windowsill. Uh, but the rest of them, the smaller pelagoniums, this size and down, they, uh, they stayed in the sunroom. And they've been on windowsills around the house and, you know, on the kitchen windowsill and stuff. And I've just, I've just enjoyed the flowers all, all winter. They've been flowering. So um, they were a success as well. Didn't lose any any pelagoniums because I just I just potted them up, cleaned them off, made sure that there was no nasties in them, and um, rinsed all the soil off them before I brought them in the house in a bucket of water, and made sure that there wasn't anything in there. And then I repotted them into new compost and uh, brought them into the house on um, you know repotted to sort of spend the winter in the house and they've been great so i'm very very happy with with those tulips i think these were called foxtrot but they're just they're just coming now will be lovely but i think these may be maybe their fourth year for these in a pot which is quite remarkable these are definitely second second year tulips three new azaleas in there doing okay this one's starting to flower lovely they got squirreled away last night as well this is a pot of clematis here patio clematis uh, from raymond Everson. tudor collection i think they are there's Elode, Filigree and Bijou in here. So looking forward to seeing those. I think they'll be they'll be quite pretty when they come. Looking forward to those. 
an enemy is here. I'm going around to see my neighbour, my friend June, later on today. So I'll be cutting some of these for her. She'll enjoy those. Donation's looking a bit rope here now, isn't she? But she's still got flowers on her. <laughs> she's still flowering. <laughs> she was flowering and there's buds here. Look, she was flowering in March once. She, beginning of March, she, she was flowering. And we're now at the end of April and she's still chucking out buds. I mean, what a trooper. I mean, everybody knows how I feel about donation anyway because I go to great lengths to protect her but you know she's rewarding me with all this and you know what have I had two months have I had of um stunning display like this I mean it's incredible isn't it for March and April that I've had two of you know quite quite miserable months sometimes and I've had this every day fabulous fantastic thank you thank you very much donation I've loved it these are cute these are botanical tulips they open up during the day when the sun's on them and then they close up again at night <laughs> and they're closed at the moment but they'll be open about lunchtime <laughs> they open up flat and the bright yellow, like a bright yellowy orange, they're from uh, my neighbour. They're stunning, aren't they? <laughs> she couldn't remember giving them to me. She, she didn't remember ordering them, I don't think. She's got quite a few in her garden, because she said to me the other week, I don't know where these have come from. And I said, I do. <laughs> I do. Because she gave me a load. <laughs> and I've planted some. And, um, of course, it was... Um, probably in the autumn last year when she bought them and she sort of said I don't know where these have come from and how many gardeners do that things pop up in your garden you think I don't remember buying that <laughs> I nearly bought some Alstrom areas the other week I'd forgotten that I'd already ordered them because you order them you know sort of pre-order you forget what you've ordered and I'd already pre-ordered these Alstrom areas and I was just about to order them again and my husband said you've already ordered some of them <laughs> you've already ordered those and I'm like have I I don't remember doing that anyway I had <laughs> so <clears throat> so he, he kind of caught me I mean I could have had double the, am <laughs> the amount of Alstrom areas couldn't I but he's got a good memory don't marry an accountant <laughs> They're very good with numbers <laughs> and they have a great memory. <laughs> Forget me nots, aren't they cute? These anemones are so cute, aren't they? They're so bonny. And of course, this Bellis perennis, the pomponettes, they're still at it. They're still flowering. These were flowering last October. <laughs> And um, they didn't really have much of a downtime in winter, really. They just sat here. They didn't do anything. But they've really come into their own this spring. They've sort of tripled in size, I think. But I love those. I need to get more of those. These are quite pretty, aren't they? They go really nice. With the Montana. How lovely is that? They look really lovely together, don't they? They're really pretty. Aren't they lovely? Very nice. And this one here doesn't get quite as much sun, so it's going to be later. So it's only just starting, which is fantastic. These are Sir Winston Churchill's. Gorgeous. Really lovely. They're really bonny and the smell wafts all the way around the garden. It's stunning. It's really strong. It's a lovely perfume. Very nice. A little bit like Bridal Crown. If you know the fragrance of Bridal Crown or Cheerfulness. But they're tall, aren't they? Very, very tall. They're sort of right up there with the tulips. 
which is saying something, isn't it? The sun's just gone in and just look at the colour there of that azalea with the aces behind. Isn't that stunning? It really is beautiful. What a lovely time of year this is. Stunning. The colours are just incredible, aren't they? I do love this time of year, it's fabulous. Lots of pelagoniums and some bedding here. Things I've kept over in the winter. Pop them in the sunroom. Some were in the potting shed. Most of them were in the sunroom. And they're, they're fine, aren't they? They've been flowering pretty much all winter. And um, I haven't lost any. So that's pretty good. These pelagoniums are pretty good, aren't they? So I must have over a dozen, I think. And that's um, that's a petunia that I kept over in the greenhouse, actually. That's lived in the greenhouse the whole time. And these are some cuttings of petunias. And these are some minis that I just bought and split and um, taken some more cuttings of and some bacopas I did the same with. They're um, hardy geraniums actually that I've just divided. And there's another one there that I just dug up and split. But most of these are actually pelagoniums that were kept over from last year. They're all just hardening off now. Now we get a nice day. I can bring them out and let them get a bit of air. Looking good, aren't they? But they've been in flower all winter, these. So they've been, um, they've been colourful in the house. And haven't lost any, which is brilliant. And of course, this is Boogie, Bougainvillea. This will be her third year. Oh, I've not killed her yet, so... <laughs> She's got lots of little buds coming. You can just see in there. Down in there, you can see she's got lots of little buds coming. But she seems quite happy. She's had a day out today, so she'll have liked that. These are pretty, aren't they? Smell so nice. So lovely. I took some of these over to my neighbour today. I just cut some for her and popped them in a vase and they smell amazing. Really lovely. Lots of clematis to plant. I think there's 27 or 28 here. So I'm going to be busy next week. I've got a lot to plant. Louis' little planter. I just bought that yesterday. Little azalea for him. The uh, the roadie that I got for him um, had stopped flowering. So I thought, oh, I'll pop him a, a new one in. So I, I saw that yesterday and I thought it was so pretty. So I'll pop that in for now. It looks colourful, doesn't it? I've just started to do this garden. I put some... Um, some forget-me-nots in there this week and I've got some perennials that I'm going to I've just been digging over this bit of garden here I have some perennials I'm going to put in here and um, I've got some cut flowers and things I want to plant and that is roughly where that uh, quince the cameo is going to go we just can put a little um, frame for that that should be nice there and I planted some flocks here yesterday I've dug up and moved this is a big hole from where some of those flocks were there were five clumps I want to move these geraniums here um, I might shift them into this corner or split them and then I've got room to plant um, a couple of roses in there they'll be nice and um, some of the flocks are there in that big barrel. I think they've got three clumps in there. Some have gone to my mother-in-law. And um, some are over there in Louis's little bit of garden. And there's some flocks there. I think they're pink though. These were all white. But they were about five foot high here. And um, they were just like a wall of flocks last year. And they were lovely. But I think they might be just getting a little bit too big for the boots. Um, and because they are so tall, I think they maybe need to go towards the back. So um, because this fence is coming out now, 
we're going to remove this fence here um, I just think it would look odd uh, where they were so we've dug those out and um, I'm just going to redesign this little bit here the um, Philadelphus the virginal that's leafing out beautifully it's looking really good very pleased with that and um, Ghislaine over there she's looking pretty good isn't she that was a cutting <laughs> the peony that's getting ready that should be nice and it's got more room now that the flocks have been removed so hopefully that will have a little bit more space the paths and the patio they're scheduled to be done in june beginning of june or the end of may i think it's not brilliant timing for the roses but it is what it is and um you know we we sort of said we'd hold back on having the landscaping done because louis wasn't well and he'd lost his sight and we didn't want to upset him by having everything changed around and workmen and things he was only just finding his way around the garden really with his sight failing so we we put it off at the end of may beginning of june is is when it's scheduled and we've bought the stone so it's all going to be um the paths are going to be changed and um all the levels should be all level because at the moment what we sort of inherited when we bought the house really was all these different steps and levels you know there's there's flags and different flags and they go right round and um, some of them are different materials and then there's a step down and then there's more flags and then there's some concrete and there's a step up you know into the potting shed there's a big step there and um, this is all going to be changed and it's all going to be matching stone right round the bungalow and the same for the patio so hopefully that should be a big improvement and it should uh, it should be easier without all these different levels and there's a step up there and now you see there's a step back down here <laughs> as you can see there's a there's a step up here and a step down on there and it's um it's all different uh, materials and then there's a concrete that goes round to the front and then there's flags again and it's just higgledy piggledy I suppose as um, as time's gone on and they've extended at the house and things have been done they've changed things and but um, we have an opportunity to to redo it so that's that's um, something to look forward to in a way and something to not look forward to in another way because it's going to be um, rose time and we'll have the landscapers here but it's going to be done in three weeks so that's the the time that the sort of they reckon so hopefully we can still enjoy the garden and um and it'll, it will be done then so oh, it's not too bad is it i mean it's so i suppose it's never a good time having workmen digging up your garden but um but there you go so that's that's going to be welcomed really once it's done so i think i think that's a good enough tour i didn't intend to do at all i all all i wanted to do <laughs> was say we've 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 brought the we've brought the fountain out that's all i really wanted to do and i've ended up wandering around like you do blabbing on about all kinds of things <laughs> Anyway, the fountain is up and working, or sort of working. The wind is blowing it, so it's... But uh, things look pretty good, don't they? Things are, things are looking pretty good. I've just started putting these plants away now because it's getting late in the day and they can go to bed, get a, get a drink and go to bed.